I'm just coming back. I don't know what happened, you guys. I, I We got disconnected, and um, I don't know what you heard or didn't hear, but I almost lost it crying. <laughs> um, we're just going to continue on. That That's was, okay. That's I, okay. That story, I, if it, no one else heard it, then it was just for me, and I'm going to take it. <laughs> <sighs> Woo! Yeah. All right. Um, so so when I... I this, this story was about saving a dog on the freeway, you know, and, and feeling the energy and stuff like that. And the answer to your question was, did, did that help you get real? Yes. There's something I needed to do to get back to where I'm really feeling compassion. Because unless I felt love or compassion or moved, I had no talent, zero talent. And that's what happened. When I became a, a teacher, to being too much aware of myself, the reason I lost my soul was because I, 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 I lost, I was more into material things than I was feeling and being in compassion. Because you can't, you can't fill the glass with both things. I mean, right. if you're all about looking, you know, bella figura, you're looking good and blah, 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 and then, and then or you're, or you're, or you're. you can, but I don't know how to do I it. I don't know how to do yeah, it either. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I never got the truth. how to do it. Yeah. Um, a lot, you're, I mean, as we talk, spirituality keeps coming out in a lot of this. And I think it's hard to not have this component, especially if you're looking at the human condition, which is what your work focuses on. Um, a lot, uh, as we were going through your work yesterday, I mean, you were talking about, uh, there's a couple of things that stood out to me. Um, definite elevation of women and then just you you have very very structured paintings they don't look structured but their ideas are structured in which you have an idea a place where it starts and a definite story that it tells in which it moves it moves to an end an end idea um how how, how do you link that to your own spirituality? All I know is when I go back to um, drawing the homeless person or being in prison or drawing a dog on the freeway, then that when my heart breaks a little bit, mm -hmm. then suddenly I... I the, being a non-artist, suddenly I become an artist. Something comes through me into that canvas. I, I'd written in my my book. I'd written, I'd written. The canvas is my master. The brush is my leash, and I'm the dog. So really, I'm not really, I'm not following a, a reli any religious tradition. What I'm doing is is that I'm feeling that when I when I feel compassion, that suddenly I have talent. When I am about material things, suddenly I have no talent. So therefore, all your work has to start from a place of compassion. So from what I can see, I mean, you're moved by news articles and just trials and tribulations of others around you. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I actually, I, I was... I was taken to Dachau concentration camp. We're talking about, and when I um, and when I was walking by the uh, the gas chambers, there, of course, to Kristallnacht. Yeah, so that's when they took all the people all over Europe, yeah, um, and and millions of them, and, and brought them in in one night. The breaking of the windows. Um, I, I'm looking in, in Dachau concentration camp, I'm walking by uh, this pretty little bucolic stream with a little bridge and this lovely brick building. I had no idea that that brick building is where they had the delousing chambers and, and took all their clothes off. Then they came into the next room and the next one says Baden, which means bath. And then they would be go in there and be gassed. And then they would be burned in the fire in the last one. I didn't know that. 
But while I'm walking, because I had a, I, I, I had a, 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 an invitation because a friend had shown the head, the, the head of the church right next to it, called the Church of Reconciliation, Dr. Mensing, had seen a catalog of mine called The, the Human Condition. And, and so he invited me to talk about the idea of doing an exhibition uh, on Dachau. But I, we didn't make any deal yet about to do that. But as I'm going to meet him for the first time with a, a young lady, I, I pass this bucolic stream and this pretty brick building, not knowing what it was, and I had a panic attack. Oh. I started strangling. I fell down on the ground. Snot was coming out of my nose. I thought I was having a heart attack. I told the lady I was with, I don't know what's happening to me, you know. And, uh, and, and I could hardly catch my breath. Then I met Dr. Mansing and we talked and, and, and I ended up doing a whole series. And, and he said, if you do this series, uh, uh, if you do anything, it can't be from anything you've ever done. It has to be from your experience now. I didn't, I had, I didn't tell him what had just happened five minutes before I met him. I had tears in my eyes still in meeting him, but I, and I was shaking. And, uh, and I said, you know, when I was a psychology student, 19 or 20, I said, somebody gave me a book called Here Fly No More Butterflies. In German, Hier fliegen keine Schmetterlinge. And, uh, and it was children who were in Theresienstadt, which was a phony concentration camp made to look better it is than it is to the public. And there were the poems of the children from Theresienstadt. Um, and one of them was, Here Fly No More Butterflies. And, uh, and I said, I, I was so moved by these 14-year-old children, the depth of their poetry uh, when I was 19 or 20, and I said, now that you ask me, I would like, I think that what would give me the most compassion is thinking of children anywhere in the world, over any war, under any circumstance, of, of immigration and everything that's going on now. Nothing gives me more pain than thinking of children. And so, so I said, I would like to give the children a voice. And so he, he gave me the job, you know. And, and I came back a year later with those paintings and, um, and there was newspaper articles in German about it. And, um, and we, we met in Munich, which is the closest town to Dachau. And he asked me, he asked me, I asked him, uh, Dr. Mensing, he's, he's a, I think he's, a, he's not Catholic, but I needed to do a confession. <laughs> and I said, I wanted to tell you something. Before I met you, I don't know if you noticed, but I was really like almost in tears. I was really upset about something. I'd had a panic attack. Does that ever happen here to anybody else? Or is it my, what I know is it my magic? Because I didn't know that about that building there. And he said, well, actually it was German law, you know, that children have to come here. And I'm not supposed to say this, uh, but almost every, third or fourth group of small children, somebody has the same panic attack when they walk by that building. So, I, am I religious? I don't know. Am I spiritual? Yes. Do I know about these things? No, I don't. But I'm a witness that I was, I was almost suffocating when I walked by there and he, uh, and he responded that it happens to children who know nothing. So. I, I ask you the question, what, what happened? Well, energy, energetically sensitive. Yeah. You know, kids have it, and then we lose it as we get adults, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah. You know, and if you can stay connected to it, which apparently you are. Yeah. I mean, what other, I don't, I don't have any other explanation. Yeah. I don't, I've got nothing here. Yeah. But I hope that's an ex explanation. Sure. Is it spiritual? Yes. Is it religious? I'm sure that everything spiritual can be translated into all of the religions, but for for me, I'm 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 interested in in well. When I was young, I read uh, William James' variety of religions, but it doesn't mean that I'm a priest or even even 
you know, any more than an artist who feels things. Nothing more than that, you know. I was going to ask you the question, why not paint from joy? But just not that, just not the interesting part. I, actually, I do paint from joy. Because what I believe is that with the problem of humanity, is, is like a, a, a ship the size of, of the planet Earth that is, the way I see it for the last 30 years, that it's moving with such a mass off of a cliff. Yeah. Yeah? And, and that's what I've been, that's what I knew 30 years ago. You know? I mean, I think in 1987, I, I, I did something in art form, 1987, and I had written in a newspaper that we're, that we human beings are as if we're on a, on a train uh, going at breakneck speed into the future and it's only us, the passengers, that will make a difference of our, our own survival. And, and so, so I, I feel like, like it's very necessary for me not to show the sensationalism of how horrible humanity is. I think humans are angels. I have a crazy philosophy somebody can disagree with me let's pretend metaphorically speaking and not religious speaking poetically speaking that we're all angels okay okay i like it some i like where it starts late angels that are, are 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 connected to compassion and light and goodness are going to be really kind of like more of we imagine angels to be and then angels that are absent of it are more connected to Mephistopheles and the devil and the, who were fallen angels. But we're angels nonetheless. Okay. That's my idea. Okay. So, in order to take this giant ship that's going off the, the waterfall of, of losing the planet Earth and the ecology and, and humanity and the animals and, and the beauty and of nature and everything, that if, if all of us who care a little bit put our shoulder against that ship, maybe we can kind of change, divert its direction so we don't go off the cliff. So how do we do that? We do it with education. And how do I do that with education? I don't show the sensationalization of the ugliness of humanity. I, I show, to, to your point, the, the joy, the beauty, the, the angel side, when we are in the light. You know, and now that I'm thinking about your work, absolutely, because there's always transcendence in your work. Yes. There's always a lift. There's always the, the, the subject matter on the bottom and, and the people who are understanding more and more stepping off of each other as they get to the top. Exactly, exactly. And so in that case, that what I feel as an educator or wannabe educator is that I want to show the duality of human beings. I have a painting called The Choice on gangs. However, I could call my career, I could call the title of me and what I want to do to put my shoulder against the, this ship to save it with all of my collabor millions of other collaborators who feel the same way, is that I could call it the choice. We have a choice. When we see the duality of the, of the two sides of the angels that we can be, we can just ask, which one do you want to be? Right. And that's educational. Yeah. There's also remembering that we're all multifaceted, and so we all, we all carry this around. I mean, and to think that you are just one or the other. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, I mean, we, we all have all capacities of, of light and dark, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and so if I, if I were to say something about um, a spiritual path through art, is, is that yes, showing the joy of humanity, the beauty of humanity, the kind, kind, kindness of humanity, all those things that come on, on TikTok and all those little things, you know what I mean? You'll see, a, you'll see just from a dog that will, that will save a baby. I mean, I mean when the yeah. eruption of Vesuvius happened and that everybody was captured in plaster, the most moving thing in the whole thing is a dog on top of a baby when the ashes are coming down, frozen that way, 
giving his own life because I really feel that animals sometimes are our teachers because they have more compassion than humans. Yeah. So, if, um, and if we need to look up at somebody, it can be Frank Charles Perkins, who's a homeless guy, you know, who tells us about being, being a donkey is the kindest and most mistreated animal in the world, you know. And I worked with uh, mentally challenged people. They don't use the word retarded anymore, but yeah. I found some of those people so kind, so beautiful, so warm. Really I pure. felt safe. Yeah. I felt safe with them. That's why originally, before I did the art and psychology, I didn't want to be a clinical psychologist for rich people. I wanted to work with mentally challenged people. Yeah, there's a lot of value there. All right, listen, we've been, oh yeah, we've been talking for a while. Um, I don't want to... I don't want to wear you out. There's no, just so, I mean, I feel like I could be here all day just discussing oh, all of this. When, 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 all, when, we, when, when any people, any two people come together to talk about uh, what, what, what's important in life, you know, we're really, we're really giving that space a blessing yeah. and yeah. sharing it together. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Any last weird, weird weirds? Any last words? For people, oh, I visited Dachau when I was four. I never forgot it. Yeah. Good, George is wow. saying that. Wow. Thanks wow. for chiming in, Georgia. Um, any you. last words for yeah, the yes, lovely yeah, people? Yes, for, for the lovely people. I want to say that, that, that many of the people that I taught, um, at, in, especially in the night classes at UCL Extension and Art Center, they were, they were mothers. Uh, and fathers, but many, many mothers who loved art and were compassionate and felt things since they were a child, but they sacrificed their life. And I've seen it even with men too, sacrificing themselves for their family. But, but those people who come to an art class and they haven't done anything because they sacrificed their life to raise their children, they're the heroes of the world. And when I joke facetiously about being an art proselytizer, it's so important for all of us, no matter where we start, to have this conversation and this blessing by coming back to your art, even if you haven't done it for 30 years, and even if you're a total, total beginner, even if you were better when you were 12 than you are now at 50 or 60 or whatever, I think it's just, you, you are entering into a meditative state and you're living in a blessing even to learn how to draw something so simple as a flower. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Let's see you later. <laughs>